What's going on, everybody? Rob Doster here from the Field of 68. And today we're going to bring you another episode in our NBA Draft Prospect Profile Series. These are going to be dropping throughout May and throughout June, a couple a day. So if you do like this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and do hit that like button. Anything that you can do to interact with these videos, it really does help the channel. It helps more people like you find this content. And since I have you here, make sure you check out our Instagram and TikTok pages. We are going to be pumping out more unique content over there throughout the spring and the summer heading into the 2022-23 college basketball season. Like, for example, did you know that Penny Hardaway was shot when he was in college? I didn't know that. You can find that story right now live on our TikTok and Instagram pages. The links for those are in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into another Field of 68 NBA Draft Prospect Profile. Welcome back to another episode of the Field of 68's 2022 NBA Draft Prospect Profiles. My name is Rob Doster. I have Randolph Childress of the ACC Network here with me today, and we're going to be breaking down one of the most interesting freshmen from the ACC this past season. That is Notre Dame point guard, combo guard, off guard, yeah. lead guard. I don't know what you want to call him, but his name is Blake Wesley. He's 19 years old. He is six foot five with a long wingspan. He averaged 14 points. Uh, almost four rebounds, two and a half assists, and one and a half steals while shooting a little bit of a concerning 40, 30, and 66%. Those were her splits uh, this past year. I don't know how I feel about this guy. I see him getting some top 20 buzz, RC. I feel yeah. like a lot of that is you're drafting on the potential that you have a six foot five explosive guard that maybe could one day figure it all out. I think that's exactly it. The numbers are he, he flashed. And seeing him all year, he flashed. And, and everyone at Notre Dame would tell you they got all the experience in the world. But this young man was the reason. Blake was the reason why they finished second in the league and had a nice little tournament run. I, I, you know, he is a guy, ultimately at that level, is going to be a 3 and D guy. You know, he's got to evolve into that. But you got to show it. He wasn't asked to do a whole lot of that. You know, they, you know that's been a knock on Notre Dame in general was their ability to defend. So he's not coming in with this defensive mindset. Not a great shooter, like you said. I mean, he's a 30% three-point shooter, but he wasn't afraid at the moment. He is a, you know, so, you know, what, I'll say this. You know what his draft situation reminds me of? It reminds me of Josh Primo. In a sense that you just didn't expect it. You didn't expect it. And then all of a sudden, it wouldn't surprise me today, you know, or the draft that he he's a, the 20th pick in a draft or something like that. Where I like you, I got my concerns, but then he can go to a team that says, "Hey, we know what you can do. We know we like this great organization that want to, you know, put him to the side and say, hey, we're going to develop you and bring you along.'" And when you start getting into those twenties, you're dealing with playoff teams, and they're not going to need him right away. So he'll be in a position to say, "Hey, come in. We want to put you in our G League, put you in our program, kind of, you know, ease you into things." But he teases you. I mean, he doesn't. He took he four shots, but he had to. He had to create. I mean, that's what his role was at that time. I mean, Prentice didn't have the athletic ability to do it. So a lot of that fell on him. So in watching him play several times, I mean, I think as a young guy, he, he, he took more on himself and then he made mistakes, but they couldn't dial him back because they needed him to do it. So they allowed him to, to play through his mistakes. But he's an intriguing guy. His numbers don't wow you, but he flashed so much for a young guy. This is strictly off potential. You know who he kind of reminds me of a little bit? It's, uh, it's, it's Jaden Ivey. Right mm -hmm. at the end of Jaden Ivey's freshman year, there was some talk like, yeah, I mean, he might be able to sneak into the first round if a team loves him. There's some long term potential there. But he came back to school and every single person on the planet had Jaden Ivey ranked as, you know, like a, a preseason All-American and a guy that was going to be the breakout star and a potential right. Big Ten player of the year. And part of the reason we love Purdue is because Jaden Ivey was this game changer. Um, and I think that's kind of what Blake Wesley is at this point. He's just going pro a year earlier. So. Here's here's my two questions with him. I don't know. I don't know what position he plays in the NBA right now, right? Like, I don't think he right now has the passing ability to kind of make like those multi-level reads. Like if he's coming off a ball screen, is he able to see where the tagger is and figure out who's open on the opposite side of the floor? Can he make those like one-handed cross-court passes? Um, he's not a good enough shooter, I think, at this point to play off the ball. So I, I don't really know what position he is. So that I think that's my biggest single question mark with him is does he have will he to develop the shooting to play off the ball or the the ability to pass to play on the ball? I don't I don't know where it's more likely. 
He's streaky. I, I think he's off the ball. I don't think he's a point. I think he's a secondary ball handler. And he's not, he's more of a scorer than he is a shooter. But he's a guy that's capable. You're not going to leave him and embarrass him into a shot. Like you're going to have to guard him. I think his issue and why his percentage is so bad because he doesn't understand what's a good shot yet. You know, he would he would over dribble in the in the traffic. He would over dribble and in, in, in get into trouble. So those are the things that would hurt him. And I don't know if that's something that, you know, he, he'll get coached out of some of that. You know, he, he was really streaking and shooting. He has the range. He just needs to figure out what's a good shot, what's not. He won't have the pressure and the responsibility that he had in Notre Dame as a young guy. But a lot of teams could use a secondary ball handle. I mean, you look at Phoenix. I mean, you know, we talked about that. Another guy. I mean, we're watching these playoffs. Luke, I mean, Dallas Mavericks. There's a lot of teams that need some of these guys that are 6'5", that can that can defend. Now, again, the, the scariest thing about him is, again, what we talked about with Mark just earlier, Mark Williams, is that guys who who already show you that, it's a lot easier to transfer. So now we're talking about a guy that wasn't a great defender. He was a willing defender. You know, he was a willing defender. And a lot of pressure on that team. That team turned it around, and he was a big part of that. So that counts for something. It says something about him. He's just young, and he needs the right situation. He, You know, he can very easily go to the wrong situation. I don't think he's a point, but I do think he's a guy that can come off your bench and eventually evolve into a 3 and D guy. He needs to. He needs to do that. But he can come off and make plays. Right now, he's looking to score. But that team needed him to do that. Notre Dame needed him to do that. And we'll see if he can develop into more. Pat, the floor will be spaced. He has the size, the physicality to do it. He's a willing, you know, I, I'm more concerned because he's so thin. He didn't finish well at the rim the way you think, Eve. I think that was another thing that was concerning. Yeah, and he's also just 19 years old. So 19. I think some of that will come with age. I think part of it will be when you get to the NBA where everything is kind of more spaced. Yep. And he's going to have easier drives to the basket and easier uh, lanes to finish. Um, the one thing I loved about him, he like that dude is not afraid of the moment. Not he afraid. Hit, so I think he had he had a game winner against I think it was Kentucky. Um, he had another one in ACC play. Uh, he was not afraid of taking and making a big shot. He was not afraid of taking and well any shot. Yeah, the, <laughs> normally missing tough shots, but um, I, I think that will serve him well in the league as he kind of gets uh, you know easier possessions. I, I think he'll play off the ball a little bit more, where yeah. you're going to be attacking a closeout as opposed to having to square somebody up and try to beat him off the dribble. And I mean, you can attest to this, RC. It's it's easier to get a um, a clean look when someone is running at you than when you are squaring them up one on one, unless you're one of the absolute elite. So um, I, I think that will help him at the next level as well. It definitely will. I mean, he'll be the ball handling guy when you're trying to attack a guy. For example, if he's playing against me and they're like, "Hey, we're gonna put Randolph in ball screens," he's a guy that you can put the ball in his hands and say, "Hey, attack him and put him in ball." We're not gonna let you hide Randolph over in a corner. We're gonna put him in the action and force rotation. He's good enough right now, you know, right now to be able to do that. Yeah, I think the interesting thing about him in this draft is he's probably not a lottery pick, right? He's probably in that uh, somewhere like close to early 20s, late teens, something like that. Now, the issue is if you're getting drafted there, you're getting picked by a team that's already in the playoffs. You're probably getting picked by a team uh, that needs someone to help you win immediately. So I wonder if he could end up being a guy that slides a little bit just because when you are – when you're looking to fill a hole, you're not looking necessarily to get a uh, a 19-year-old kid that's going to need probably like a year and a half, two years of seasoning mm-hmm. before they really end up being someone that can impact an NBA game. So um, it'll be very interesting to me to see where he lands. But whoever gets him is getting the guy. I mean, if if it works out for him, if he if that jumper comes along a little bit, if the, those passing reads come along a little bit, you get him NBA strength and conditioning, he adds 15, 20 pounds of muscle, he's going to be a good player. He's going to be a good player. I like him. I, I think and watch him enough. He, he was he's shown enough. He's shown that he's willing. And like I said, he's not afraid of the moment, but he's got to get better defensively. All those things will come. I just think like we talked about so many times with any of these guys, they just need to be in a good situation. Yep. There's a reason why freshmen are freshmen. There's a reason yep. why sophomores end up being so much better as sophomores. Uh, it's a shame we won't see him in college basketball next season, but. You know, when you had a chance to go make that guaranteed money, no one can really hate on you for that. So this has been another edition of the Field of 68's 2022 NBA Draft Prospect Profiles. We just broke down Blake Wesley. If you hit that like button, if you subscribe to the channel and go back and scroll through, you will find as many as 40 of these breakdowns. We're going to be rolling them out through the month of May, through the month of June. So make sure you subscribe. So for Randolph Childress, I was Rob Doster. Thanks for tuning in.